Hello YouTube community, uh, welcome to Awakening of the Rebellion Let's Play Part 14. Um, so uh, last episode was um, a tactical little video um, and this video is the outcome of that. So the first thing that's going to happen is this um, Ace Azamon mission into Tsar. Um, so the majority, about half of this episode is going to be Almost like a tutorial if you uh, for this um, particular mission. So, if anyone's having trouble with it, um, the first half of this video is how to do the Czar mission. It, this is on hard difficulty. I actually switched the difficulty midway through the Let's Play to hard. Um, something that carried over from one of my other saves because um, the difficulty is standard across all saves, and you just switch it. Um, so we are actually playing on hard. So this is the Czar mission on hard and how to do it. Um, if you're having trouble with it, in case you can't um, successfully do it, um, just follow what I do and you should be fine. Um, so the first step in this mission is to just um, fly over into these asteroid fields, which is going to take a while for, for the mission to start up. So here, very simple, you just select the unit and just move it into the asteroid field and it's going to take a while for the game to register that you've done it right. So here, as you can see, it's taking a while, but um, it should register in a little bit. It's no problem. All right, so this part of the mission, um, you have to be very careful. So what happens is, is that this convoy comes in. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to follow this convoy into the Imperial outpost. So as these ships come in, you know, cinematic goes through, they start moving, and now um, Ace Asimon is going to fire up his engines, and you're going to have to follow a Corellian um, ship, which is basically identical to how yours looks. So whatever Ace Asimon looks like, that's the ship you want to follow. I actually do make a little bit of a mistake here. Um, you're actually there's two Corellian um, freighters. Um, there's the one in front, and then there's the second one in back. Um, I thought it didn't matter which one you're supposed to follow, but it turns out you're supposed to follow the second one, and I start to follow the first one. So what you're actually supposed to do is follow the one behind the first one, and just stay behind it. You have to also be very careful not to um, click on an enemy ship so so you don't attack it because once you attack it the mission's busted and you have to um, restart it another um, tip that I, I can give you is to you can actually save in the middle of a battle so um, I would suggest doing this um, approach very carefully and then saving right as you get up to the outpost and then load it every time you die in case you're having problems so that you don't have to waste um the hero coming back and then because you can fail the czar sequence and then czar will become inaccessible if you fail if you fail to complete the czar mission in like i think 40 galactic days or whatever it is um there you just saw um i just got a warning to to follow to to stay close to the corellian freighter and that's when i found out that you have to you, you can't choose between the two. It's You have to follow the second one. Apparently, the first one goes off in a different direction. Um, so always follow the second one. And this is the method you just want to do. You just want to um, just every once in a while just click right behind the, the freighter. Um, it's pretty tedious, I know, but it's, it's better than um, messing up and having to do it all over again. So that's the strategy for this part.
Here we're approaching the Imperial Outpost and you get the notification that you can just fly over to where the arrow is. You don't have to follow the Corellian freighter anymore. You could just hop right over and, um, and just go to where the arrow points. Um, so this part, once it docks, you're going to get a couple of, you know, story missions where the rebels infiltrate this little thing, kill some stormtroopers, and then you see to the right there's a Lamba shuttle. That's the one that you're going to control after this. So you have to very quickly, you can see that I already failed it um, once, so I had to reload it. So this is the time where you'd want to save and load. Um, because this mission, you know, it's it's a hit or a miss sometimes, but uh, this is the easiest way to do it. Um, if you follow this way, you should get it in very short amount of time. So you have to be very quick at selecting. Once that red text comes up, you have to select the Lambda Shuttle and move. And you, um, instead of going straight up, you actually want to go down below. Um, you want to get out of the gun battery range of the um, space station as fast as possible so that they lose line of sight of you. Um, and you have to do this before they start firing because once they start firing, the TIE fighters know exactly where you are. Um, I don't know why that is, um, but you have to go all the way down and then you have to circle back up. So this is how, this is the path that you should take. Um, it's actually, I've, I've done this mission in multiple ways and this is actually the best path. Um, it's a little bit of a close call. You have to be pretty quick. I would recommend doing what I did and quick and numbering Ace Azimuth as a different number than the Lamba shuttle and controlling them differently. Because what you want to do is you want to sort of guide the TIE fighters that are coming in right now with Ace Azimuth so that they don't shoot at the Lamba shuttle because he can take a little bit more damage. But what you don't want to do is actively engage the TIE fighters. So it's a little bit of a game of engage and then pull off. Like watch, it's going to happen right here. And this is how it's going, this is how you should do it. You see that the TIE Fighters are going after the Lamba Shuttle, you engage the TIE Fighters, they engage you, you shoot them a little bit, and then you pull away. And they're stuck in the dogfight mode, and they don't follow you. The TIE Fighters work a little bit differently than in the regular mod in this um, mission. Like, you can see everything has is, is up, like upscaled and a little bit more slower. So the way this mission works is a little bit different than your standard space um, mission. You can see that the uh, on the radar things are spawning right behind you. That right there, that asteroid is not is not passable. So you want to go behind it and go through the asteroid field. This cruiser, this bayonet cruiser, is going to follow you pretty close, but it should never get into shooting range if you do this right. Always keep Ace Azimuth um, behind the Lamba shuttle, as they will target Ace Azimuth over the Lamba Shuttle. The Lamba Shuttle, of course, has less health than Ace Azimuth. You can see that they're closing in um, behind, but they're not in firing range. Um, and this is how you circle around. So you do a little, like, U-shape and, or more like, I don't know, well, yeah, sideways U or whatever. Um, and then you just directly book the Lamba Shuttle to the destination. And here you can see that um, I'm using Ace Azimuth sort of in range so that they fire an Ace Azimuth versus the Lamba Shuttle. But you don't want to get too close. You don't want him to actually start taking hits. So you can see you cut it pretty close on hard difficulty. Um, on easier difficulties, you won't even see them if you do this right. They won't even come in contact with you. Um, and right here, the Lamba Shuttle should be safe at automatically hyperspaces. Um, and then what you have to do is you have to click the retreat from battle button. I remember once uh, I didn't do this and I wondered what I was doing wrong and you just have to click the button and the mission finishes and you are victorious. So that is a quick tutorial on how to do that mission on hard and now we can get back into the regular let's play. So sorry that the commentary wasn't full or on all the time but I wanted it in more of a tutorial format. So. Um, back to Let's Play. Um, so what was going on up top here as um, from the last episode is I was sending fleets to defend um, Sulukami and I forget what the Moonalist? Moonalist is the other planet. Um, and so I've encountered the Bayonet cruisers with the small fleet. The Venators actually escaped from Sulukami and went back to Felucho, um, which was a mistake on my part. Uh, someone commented, I think Felipe commented um, on part 13 that I should leave a fleet at Felucia and he was right because they double back to Felucia as soon as I leave it. 
Um, props to Felipe, by the way. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy. Um, he has actually sent me over a new text file um, of translation along with a dat editor, um, which is an editor for all the files. And so I'm in the process of actually converting the whole thing into English like properly with grammar and punctuation and, and pulling some stats off of Wikipedia or Wikipedia or whatever the Star Wars Wikipedia is. And so just to get a more accurate, like consistent text file. Um, so props to him. Um, really cool guy. Um, yeah, and thank you. And this is the result of the Ace Asman mission. You get a stealth Lamba shuttle. And, um, yeah, Mon Mothma tells you that you're going to need it for later and whatever. You're going to actually use that to... to... Actually, I'm not going to spoil it. No, I'm not going to spoil it. If you, haven't, if you haven't seen this mission yet, I'm not going to spoil it. So you just need it. So keep it safe. It does respawn. You can actually use it to scout enemy um, planets. It won't give you much visibility, but, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty interesting hero. Um, An Ace Asman retreats to Liesha over here, only to encounter a Venator Star Destroyer. Um, but once this mission is over, he's supposed to just disappear from your heroes list. Um, so I just retreat him and give him a break, because he done good. Um, he's a really cool hero, but he's not that useful. So he doesn't have any special abilities. He's basically just there for the mission, and then he's gone. And, um... And that's the end of Ace Asimon. Um, so let's see. What else was going on here? Ah, yes, the fleet is coming back to Felucia. Ah, the invasion of Bakura. So this is this is an interesting story. Um, this invasion crashed on me three times in a row. And you'll see that I do some um, cuts throughout the video. I had to restart this, um, this mission multiple times, and I started saving periodically because it kept crashing. Apparently, something about Leia Organa, this game doesn't like. Uh, I don't know what, but be very careful when using Le Leia Organa to attack buildings. It seems to like to crash um, whenever she throws her um, thermal detonator ability. Uh, it's very random, it's not consistent at all, but um, be very careful with, with her as a hero um, because uh, it was a nightmare. By the time I figured out what was going on, uh, I had to restart this thing three times, and thankfully this is being done post-commentary, otherwise that would have been a nightmare. Um, but yeah, we're going to see if it's indeed possible to attack with just one hero as a stealth unit, plus C-3PO, but C-3PO is not really a hero. The basic idea, um, you don't want to do this with just a stealth, with just an infiltrator. You want a hero that spawns infiltrators, because... So the two heroes that spawn infiltrators um, are Leia and Kyle Katarn, and they spawn a whole squad of rebel infiltrators. So you want to use one of those two heroes if you're going to do this, and you can only do this on certain planets. Um, it's kind of... Um, I can't really just list out all the planets that it's good to do this on, um, but there's only certain ones that this can be done in, in like... Um, in a reasonable fashion. So the idea behind this is to defend the landing zone for a while, set up some turrets, because they don't have bombing runs or orbital bombardments, obviously, um, and just hold it out until um, hopefully, usually the pirates um, have the this arms dealer thing that spawns the Candorous assault tank, and then you want to use your rebel um, leader or the rebel infiltrator leader, which I have called them now since I updated the text file because it used to just be in German. Um, so he hijacks vehicles much like Chewbacca does in the actual game. And so what you want to do is hijack one of the Candorous tanks, which I'm going to do in a while once it comes in. And that's how um, you you get. That's how you're able to do this invasion. Otherwise, it would be extremely difficult. Likewise, if you're versing Empire, you want to. It, hopefully, they have an ATAT, or you jack a um, AA vehicle. I forget what they're called. ATAA, I think. And you jack one of those. So you jack the heaviest vehicle that you could possibly jack, hijack with, with that hero, 
and yeah, that's that's how you do it. And then you use C3PO as sort of like a meat shield to take the hits for you. Um, because So you set up like a repair shop in the back and you just keep moving him back and forth if you use C3PO. Otherwise, Leia Organa should take the damage um, because not all of these infiltrators spawn with shields um, out of the heroes because they're level 1 infiltrators. And you can see here, Candorous Tank comes into view. I book the rebel leader. He's booking it to that Candorous Tank. He nearly dies from battle droid rockets. And he takes it. Um, and now you have a tank that you can use. Um, and so the tank is going to be absorbing most of the damage while your infiltrators take out like random structures. So you can see here that I'm going to move up now with the with the whole squad and so basically this is this is a test of patience this this sort of invasion if you're patient with it you can do it um, I actually versed a whole ground population full of mercenary troops so you just have to be you know it's very hit and run like you you go in you kill one squad you back up you never want to engage full assault um, and eventually you know if if you have good enough patience, you can do it. Things like bunkers, for example, you just... The Candorous tank is longer range than bu bunkers, so you just sit outside a bunker range and just do that. So you, um, normally I would fast forward and just let the bunker be destroyed because the bunker will destroy your, your heroes and all the infiltrators very quickly because um, the firepower is very, very large. So it's just a matter of patience, really. That's what it comes down to. If you... You know, have the time. I don't know. This this land invasion wasn't exactly necessary. I could have actually just sent in, like, some more troops. But I thought it would be, I don't know, more fun to show sort of a... Uh, sort of what the rebels are powerful in. And that's infiltration and stealth and hit and run. Um, yeah, here's, here's a transition. So it, it crashed on me right there. And, well, actually, no, that was, was that a crash? I don't remember. I know that the, this this ground battle had two problems. Um, something, once again, my frames just started tanking on this ground battle for some reason. And I tried to reset it. So that's when I, so I closed the game that time and I restarted the game. Um, so that seemed to work. And then after this engagement is done, it's it crashed. And so I had to restart. As soon as I attacked the first building with Leia Organa, it just crashed. I've never seen an exception error crash like that. You can see here, I almost... The tank almost dies. So this is what I meant when by not attacking full force. Um, you, you, you have to hit and run. You have to do this. You have to back up um, and make sure you have a repair and a health station. And just do this. You see, you lure them. You kind of leash them in. And then as they come in... Um, you shoot them because the rebel infiltrators are really good. They have shields, so they can take a little bit of damage. But you want to just um, back up, and since the infiltrators have longer range and they can heal up, um, that's basically what you do. And then you use C-3PO to heal the tank in case you don't have a um, you don't have the money, or I don't know, you just didn't make a repair station or whatever. You see, I lay down some mines with the with the. Um, the explosion specialist or whatever demolitions expert I think I called him I, I named the hero or the infiltrators based on what they're good at there's actually um, I think there's five of them so there's there's this Bothan spy guy there's the field medic the field medic heals the other ones if they're near them um, you can see a, a tank comes out of nowhere and just dis like kills one of my infiltrators with one hit pretty ridiculous um and then there's there's the guy with the rockets who has also the mines and then there's the guy with just with the hijacking ability which is the leader and then is that five or did i miss one already i already lost count whatever there's five of them they do different tasks um if you guys want i can also release the text file once i'm done along with the camera um, and I'll release a short tutorial um, on how to install them. So please let me know if you if you 
want me to, to release it and uh, I'll just work on it some more um, and I'll try and do it um, a little bit quicker than I'm doing it right now in case you guys really want the, the files. But yeah, but there isn't really much to say about this battle. So... I'm actually in the process of getting a new PC because uh, <laughs> I started to realize that this laptop, if... If I keep doing Let's Plays on this laptop, eventually the galactic map is going to start to lag, and the whole... Once the battles start to escalate, um, the, the game's going to start to lag. Um, I do have a really good laptop. I posted the specs on one of my... in the comments. I have a, uh, a laptop with an i7 processor. Um, I think it's a, a 540, um, 540M graphics card for laptops um and i know the m graphics card laptops are kind of crappy but you know it's a laptop so i mean it's not really made for games but i honestly thought that it would handle this game in particular but it turns out it can but at the same time when the battles get a little intense it can't um so looks like i'm gonna have to get a a real gaming rig for those purposes and plus um i i actually the programs that I use for um, for my studies, um, they actually are very RAM intensive, and they're very they're very like they take up a lot of computing power. Like so, things like Maya and you know recording um, along with Unreal Engine, all those things. If you leave them running on this laptop long enough, they end up slowing the whole PC down as the RAM gets you know used up, and you have to restart the the computer which is usually why I get these dips in frame rates in the gameplays and um, yeah because I haven't restarted it in a long time and that's what happens so um, so my new PC should be pretty good um, I helped a friend out um, we had no knowledge of how to build a PC and we built one um, our first one ever we just like sat down YouTube um, fast food and all that um, <laughs> and we just built the PC and now, you know, you, you can basically, with that sort of knowledge, you can, you can basically build almost any PC, um, with a little bit of YouTube help. So I thought it was going to be a bigger ordeal than it really was. And it turns out that building PCs is actually, you know, you don't have to be that tech savvy. I mean, you have to be, you have to know what parts to buy if you're, um, if you're, you know, going to put one together, and it's much cheaper to put one together than to buy like an Alienware. Alienwares are overpriced. Um, I would, I would invest the time and possibly the the humiliation or the mistakes into learning how to build um, a custom one because it will pay off. They're upgradable. Well, every PC is upgradable, but at least you know what parts you put in it and and. Um, and what you need to upgrade um, if the time does come. So right now, um, I would suggest um, I'm an NVIDIA guy, so I would suggest you know the 780 that that came out isn't really worth it. So I would suggest going for the 660. Um, 780 is for the future. If if you really want to build for the future, you get the new 780, but it's really pricey right now. So I would just. I would hold off on it. I'm content with a 660. Just get good. If you're looking for a gaming PC, you you want you want um, an above average graphics card, but you want a good um, processor, CPU, and you want a lot of RAM um, because a lot of programs nowadays are very RAM intensive. Um, and if you're running multiple, you know, programs, you want a lot of RAM along. Um, but if you want dual screen setup, I would suggest going with a better graphics card. So, um, well, back to the gameplay. Um, so, if you're going to use Leia Organa, do not actually select her to destroy buildings as the game, I think, will crash. Like I said, it's random. But just, so this is why she's like sitting in the back, because I was so tired of the crashing and stuff that... Um, that I just let it go and just took the time. You see what I mean about patience. This is what I mean about patience. The AI, the AI is a lot 
there's a lot to be wanted out of the AI. Um, I wish that you could do Galactic Conquest online. I actually found out that the servers are not down. It was just a problem with my account. Um, I don't know, maybe it wasn't registering or whatever. Um, but if anyone wants to play this mod um, online, um, message me and you know the servers are still up you just need a you might need to recreate an account but I can you know personal message my um, my username on there and um, but unfortunately I would have to send you over the exact files so the way the you can play mods online but you have to have the exact same files so you'd have to have the same camera that I use and you'd have to have the exact same text file that I use that's the only two differences and you have to make sure of course you know follow my in install guide and all that jazz and um, if you want you know I'd be more than down to play some of this um, online you can only play um, skirmish battles but the skirmish battles are pretty fun if if you're playing against a real online person because against the AI it's kind of they, they, the AI cheats and it's not fun um, and here we're just, uh, there's one last bunker I need to destroy. Or no, I already destroyed it. And so I'm just going to finish off these, um, these damn pirate forces and get this freaking battle over with, which has already been so boring. So I've tried to make it as interesting as possible. Um, I probably won't do any more battles like these, um, they're not really good for commentaries as I found out I found when I saw like the length of the video I was like oh my goodness what am I gonna talk about but yeah there's one less stupid tank and they don't want to retreat so I gotta walk my ass over and destroy it and you can see that I've lost most of my infiltrators which doesn't matter cuz as long as your main hero survives the infiltrators will respawn um, yeah, and this is just the end of the battle right here. So that's just how, basically how you would do this sort of infiltration battle. Um, you just take your time, destroy bunkers out of range, make sure to hijack a vehicle. Honestly, ATATs are better than Candorous tanks to do this with. Um, but usually if you're attacking an Empire plan with an ATAT, then there's um, you're going to need a lot more infiltrators because there's probably a lot more defenses. And we are victorious, finally. So we take Bakura, and now the implications on the galactic map, in case you haven't listened to the part 13, where I do the tactics overview. Um, basically, I can just build a shield generator um, here and defend from that side of the galactic map on ground battles, and I won't need a fleet, which was the in initial intention for attacking. So that's about it for this episode. I'll see you in part 15, which happens right after this episode. I just split the videos in half, so I'll see you then.